So here's my unit circle. And you can see I've got a point on the circumference of the unit circle. By the way, that particular point, what theta would give me that point? Zero. This is where I begin, isn't it? So I would begin from here and then I would start going anti-clockwise as theta increases in size. Does that make sense? Okay. So watch as that happens. I just add in over here on the left hand side. You can't quite make it out. But this slider here is my slider for theta. Okay. So I'm actually just going to move that over a little bit. So as I go up to 90, you can see what's going on. And there it is at 90. Are you happy with that? Like you end up here. So that's where you're on the unit circle. You can keep going around, but for the purposes of this illustration, because of our diagrams, I'm going to stay in the first quadrant. Okay? So let me bring it back down for a second. Okay. Now I'm going to show you the first one. Well, not the first one. You guys get sine and cos. I'm going to show you tan and cot. Here's tan. Here's cot. Okay, let me put, choose a, a nicer wrinkle. How about that? That looks something like the, uh, the diagrams we created. Okay, so this orange line here, its length is tan theta. And the purple line, its length is cot theta. Okay, now think about this. Think. Tan zero. Tan zero. What is tan zero? Zero. It's zero. Of course it has to be, because watch what happens to the orange line when I drag us back to our starting point. There he is. Do you see where the orange line is? It's um, it's right there, <laughs> right? And it's not going anywhere because tan zero is zero, right? As theta increases, what happens to tan theta? As theta increases, tan theta gets bigger and bigger and bigger. At a certain point, it doesn't just start growing slowly. Let's zoom out a little bit. At a certain point, its growth just skyrockets. Like that, right? Do you see how little I have to drag this and how much longer that gets, right? Do you have an image of the tan theta graph in your mind? What does tan theta do as it goes from north to 90? It increases, it increases, and then it just sort of takes off, right? It never gets to 90 though. Why not? Well, from the graph's point of view, it's like, because I have an asymptote, but that begs the question, why do I have an asymptote? Answer, come back to the diagram, right? Look what's happening to that tangent. Look what happens, look what happens. Oh wait, I never actually intersect with the axis again. Right? You remember how it's got to connect to the axis and that length is tan theta. Well, you don't connect to the axis. So there's no length for tan theta. Does that make sense? It also tells you why. Let's rewind a little bit. Right? Do you remember we did the graphs of uh, tan theta and cot theta? Okay. Here's what tan theta looks like. It starts off like that. That's the first part of tan theta. What does the first part of cot theta look like? It starts off with an asymptote, and then it drops down. It does the reverse of what tan did, right? As this increases, this decreases. Do you see it? Do you see why? Look, let me go back again. If I start at zero, tan of zero is zero. And then I just move a little bit. Bam, there's cot theta. And what is cot theta? It's enormous, of course it's enormous, because look, it's right next to its vertical asymptote. Do you see that? And then as I approach 90, look what happens to cot theta. It drops down. Of course it drops down, because look, it gets shorter and shorter and shorter and shorter and shorter until it doesn't exist anymore. Does that make sense? Okay. You can make the same argument. That's um, that there. That's um, tan and cot. Oh, by the way, important angle here. That guy. Have a look at that for me. Have a look at for me. If uh, tan, oh, I zoomed out. Sorry. There we go. If this is tan forty-five, here's forty-five, right? What did I tell you about the angle between a radius and a tangent? What did I tell you about that angle? It's perpendicular. So this is ninety degrees. That makes this angle here. This is forty-five, forty-five, ninety. So what kind of triangle is this? It's isosceles, which is why this is the unit circle. It's one. This is tan. It's also 1. Tan 45 has to be 1 because you form this isosceles triangle with the radius of the unit circle. Does that make sense? Yeah, you see it? Okay, lastly, let's have a look at... There's the tangent, and I need that guy. That's sec. Can you see him down there? And there's cosec. I know it's a bit hard to see because they're on the axis, right? But hopefully you can make out what happens. For example, if I go all the way back to zero, right, there's my angle zero. This is sec down here. 
What is sec? What does the graph of sec look like? Do you remember? <laughs> it's been a while. It's a weird one, right? Let me help you. Uh, jog your memory. Sec is the reciprocal of? It's cos, right? So here's the, oops, here's the cos graph. So the sec graph looks like this. Like that, right? It starts at 1. Why does it start at 1? Look at it, there he is. Because sec, at that particular moment, is the radius of the unit circle, which is 1, okay? And then as theta increases, what happens to sec? As theta increases, look, what, what happens to it? It goes further and further and further away, and at a certain point, it just skyrockets, right? Like that, just like tan did. Does that make sense? In exactly the same way, if you want to think about this green guy, let's go back to here. This green guy over here, okay? This is cosec, isn't it? Cosec doesn't even exist at the moment. Why not? What's cosec zero? Cosec zero is one over sine zero, isn't it? But that's one over zero, it's undefined, okay? But then as soon as you start moving, I'm just gonna do that because I'm lazy. Okay. It starts to come down to 1. You see that? Because that's exactly what the cosec graph does. The cosec graph looks like this. Uh, let's put it over here. It's got its asymptote there. And it looks like that. Do you remember this one? That's cosec. Do you remember? Do you see, as I move from between 0 and 90, I'm moving between here and here. That's the little part I'm moving between. So, now you know why sine is called sine, why cosine is called cosine, why it all fits together, it's because of what's happening on the unit circle, right? Um, that's why the unit circle is so much more of a powerful way of thinking about things than just a simple right angle triangle. How does 